If I asked you to describe a specific school bus, could you? I bet not. You'd tell me it was big and yellow, the way the standard ones are, or maybe half the length and white if it was one of the specialty school ones. But you don't see the details. It just registers as bus, and your mind fills in the blanks with what you know is supposed to be there. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you're better than me at noticing this sort of thing. For your sake and the sake of your children. I hope so. I walk my son to elementary school every morning. It's just around a corner from our neighborhood. By the time I walked him to the bus stop, we'd be most of the way there, so we just keep going. It's a nice little start to my morning. He tells me all about what he's looking forward to at school that day. I actually get to walk around for a minute before planting myself in an office chair for eight hours. It's good for both of us. I see a lot of buses on this daily walk. Like I said earlier, there are basically two kinds. The big yellow ones that haven't changed since my grandparents were kids, and the newer half-size ones that look more like party vans that decided to grow up and get serious jobs. There are plenty of both that zoom past us on our little walk, and until recently, I would have said that I paid attention to them. Now, though, it's become clear that I've been seeing less and assuming more than I thought. Right before we get to school, we have to cross the road. There's a crosswalk and everything, so it's not unsafe. But obviously, if a bus hits you, you're still going to be dead no matter how legally right you were. When we're checking both ways before we cross, I always try to make eye contact with any drivers that are approaching just to make sure they've noticed us before we step out into the street. This is when I first noticed something was wrong. One of those white half-buses was coming towards us one day, with a brightly colored logo above the windshield reading, Kinder Time. It wasn't slowing down quite as much as I would have liked, and when I tried to catch the driver's eye, I realized that I couldn't see through the windshield. It was tinted, almost mirrored, even as the bus rolled past us, I couldn't see inside. The doors and windows were all shadowed as well. He should have stopped for us, right, Daddy? We have a crosswalk, so he should have stopped. Right, bud. My son's eager questioning brought me back to the present moment. But he didn't, did he? Nope. He went right through. And that's why we wait. Right. We wait because we don't want to get hurt in the street. If it hadn't been for that momentary interaction, I probably never would have looked twice at that bus. I honestly don't know how many times I'd seen it before that. It looked familiar. I had assumed that kinder care was some local before or after school program and hadn't really thought any more about it. I saw it again on our walk a few days later, though, and noted once more that I couldn't see inside. It was odd to me. I'd never seen a school bus with tinted windows before, and definitely not one with a tinted windshield. It didn't even feel like that should be legal. I wondered if maybe it was just the glare from the morning sun. Surely the school wouldn't be letting buses with illegal modifications drive students around. When I dropped my son off at the front door of the school, I saw the Kinder Time bus idling over in the bus loop. My curiosity was needling me, so I wandered over to take a closer look. The windshield was definitely tinted. I couldn't see inside, even as I walked right up next to it. The engine was running, but the door was closed, so I knocked on it. Hello? Excuse me? I called. There was no answer. The door remained shut. I pushed on it lightly, then pulled my hand back in surprise. It was warm to the touch. Not like warm metal, but more like warm skin. The doors had flexed slightly under my hand, but still stayed firmly closed. I knocked again. It rang like metal under my knuckles, but it still felt like flesh against the flat of my hand. Hey, is anyone in there? I tried to peer through the door, but even up close I couldn't see anything except for my own distorted face looking back at me. Hello? Sir, what are you doing? The voice came not from the bus, but from behind me. 
I step back guiltily as if caught doing something wrong, an automatic response to the teacher's voice, even as an adult. I just wanted to ask the bus driver a question. Is your child on that bus? No, but does your child go here? Yes, he's in third grade. I saw her relax slightly, and I realized that she was worried about why I, an unattended adult male, was trying to get into a bus at an elementary school. I hastened to reassure her. I walk my son to school every day. I just thought it was weird that this bus had tinted windows. I just wanted to ask the driver about it. I gestured at the bus, hoping that she would also think the windows were unusual. But the driver had taken advantage of the distraction and pulled away. With the sun reflecting off the back window, it was hard to tell that there was anything different about it. Something else caught my eye, though. I'd been reading the logo as Kinder Time, which is certainly the impression it gave. Now that I was actually looking, though, those weren't exactly the letters. It actually said K-I-I-N-D-E-P-T-I-N-I-E, -I like a logo in an AI rendering. Did you see? I started to ask the teacher, but the bus was well past where she could reasonably see the logo, and it was clear that she was just interested in seeing me leave the school property. I obliged and began my walk home, but my mind was firmly on the odd bus. I looked up kinder time when I got home, and although it was indeed a large chain of extra-scholastic programs, the closest one was over a hundred miles from my house. There was no way they were picking up or dropping off any kids at the school. I wondered if maybe someone had bought one of their old buses, but then how to explain the weirdly misspelled logo? It looked at a glance like the logo on the Kinder Time website, with the same primary color bubble font. It was a pretty good attempt, assuming it had been drawn by someone with no understanding of letters who was just following the shapes. But how would that have ended up on a bus? I started to watch for the Kinder Time bus every day. I saw it most mornings, and each time I noticed something else strange about it. Its shape wasn't quite right. Where the others had hard angles, it curved more fluidly. It was smaller and wider than even the other half buses. The logo was misspelled differently on each side, always close to correct, but never quite right. Every day it came to the school. Every day it waited in the bus loop. I never saw it drop any students off, but every once in a while I'd see someone get on. That was the strangest part of all. A student, or occasionally even a teacher, would be walking alone, and the Kindertime bus's door would flop open. The person would look up, hesitate, then step inside the bus. The door would close behind them. The bus never left at this point. It always sat there for at least another ten minutes sometimes much longer, before finally the emergency exit at the back would open and the person who had gotten in would climb out. The emergency exit would swing shut and only then would the bus leave. I never saw it take on more than one passenger at a time. I never saw it leave with any at all. I thought I was being subtle when I watched the bus, that I was unobserved. I thought that right up until last week. I was in my usual observation spot, pretending to drink a coffee and talk with other parents, when I saw my son walk out in the waiting area near the bus loop. He looked around, spotted the Kindertime bus, and headed toward it. I shouted, No! and sprinted for the bus, but its doors were already opening. I covered the ground at a dead run. I could see I was never going to make it in time. I hollered my son's name and he turned to look, but his foot was already on the bottom step. Over my son's shoulder, I saw inside the bus at last. It was dark and moist inside, living and organic. It looked horribly like a throat. There was a bus driver, or something like one. It sat deep inside, but its arm was still long enough to reach out and grasp my son by the hand. I locked eyes with the driver thing, 
or would have if it had had anything like that in its shapeless mass of a head. It seemed to see me, though. For just a moment, it held my son in its grip as I ran desperately towards it, much too far away to stop it. And then, with little push, it let him go. The door was closing by the time I scooped up my son in my arms. I was crying, which made him start crying as well. Are you hurt? Are you okay? I'm fine, Daddy. I'm fine. I finally calmed down enough to set him down. I looked him over, but the thing didn't seem to have harmed him in any way. It was only then that I spotted the note in his hand. It was a regular piece of notebook paper. The writing on it was precise, even if the letters were somewhat nonsensical. I could read it if I squinted. It was a fairly good attempt at English, and the context helped to fill in the gaps. Stay away from the bus. I should report it. I should let someone know. But I've seen too many teachers step into that terrifying thing. Seen too many things that look like them sent back out again afterwards. Someone from the office sent my son out to that bus that day. I was seen. I was known. I've gotten the only warning I'm going to get. Everyone else can look out for their own. I'm going to stay away from the bus.